Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 26th of October today. We're going to do an update on Bitcoin. Obviously, yesterday we saw some very interesting price action to the upside in Bitcoin, which has continued on until uh, this morning. And I see a lot of people talking about this marking out the start of a new bullish trend. Now, I'm a little bit skeptical of that. We haven't really taken out the bearish parameters, so the parameters for the downtrend. Uh, I'm going to highlight that in this video and I'm going to show you why we may be, a, a, may be experiencing a bit of a bull trap in last night's price action. So it's something I want to be very wary of and also I'll explain the invalidation point which will suggest that we are in fact forming a bottom uh, where price bottomed out here. Um, so yeah, we're going to discuss both scenarios and if that sounds interesting then stay tuned. Okay, guys, so yes, just before we uh, get started on the Bitcoin chart, I just want to throw out there a quick reminder of the cryptology service that I hold, um, where I do a weekly update on the top 15 market cap cryptos. I am expecting bigger moves in the cryptos rather than Bitcoin over the coming weeks in view of the fact that Bitcoin dominance seems to be rolling over. So I do think the, the top 15 market caps are of particular interest at this moment in time. Um, so the, this is my cryptology service. You can find it at wave618.com. It is also, there's a link to it in the description of the YouTube video. Um, but basically what it involves is a weekly update on the top 50 market caps. You get invited to the Discord community. Um, I'll do random updates also throughout the week, but also uh, it involves my full educational course on trading, 20 hours of video coverage. Check out this link, it will explain everything that's involved. A little bit of a description here, but I go into the modules that are involved down below. And as you can see, it's an extensive course covering everything that I've learned in trading, designed to help those that are completely new to trading through to those who are more experienced and want to polish off their skills. All right, so that said, let's have a look at the chart. So Bitcoin. So first of all, long term count. Uh, I covered this in detail in previous videos. So do check those out if um, if you're a little bit unsure. But essentially, since we had this top out here, I've been looking at this as a major wave three. And what I'm now looking at is all of this play out being part of a wave four. Now I've got this as a three wave move down here. I explained in previous videos how it's a W X Y. So the X is a, a descending triangle. And then we go into our three ways down to make Y. We have then got this as an ABC, which I explain in previous videos again, justified by the fact that uh, there's a very nice pitchfork that holds this price price action here. The C wave is a perfect 4.236 extension of wave A. And also across the top 15 market cap cryptos, we see that they've all pretty much all played out this uh, corrective sequence. Okay, it's a lot more obvious in the cryptos or the altcoins where the C wave isn't as extended as the uh, relative to the A wave. So yeah, that's how I'm looking at it now. So if this is a, a major ascending triangle, I'm looking at this as the A wave. We're going into the B wave and I don't think the B has finished. I think the B is going to be a double zigzag with this being our first zigzag correction and the second zigzag to the upside to equal the all time highs. So that would be the termination of the B wave of the ascending triangle. Then we go into a C, a D and an E. So let's in fact just label it very quickly. So A, uh, B, C, D and E like so. This is my preliminary plan for the time being. But now we want to focus more on the short term price action. As I said, this is the main focus of today's video. A lot of people have been switched in their mindset from just just maybe 24 hours ago to being very, very bearish. All of a sudden, everyone's very, very bullish. And it's because of this big green candle to the upside. And <clears throat> it's amazing what speed in price action, um, the impact that it will have on one's mentality and psychology. As soon as we see something move very quickly, 
it shocks us and we think there's a change in momentum. Now, just be, just be, I've mentioned this time and time again in previous videos. Be mindful that the C wave of an ABC expanded flat can be very, very aggressive. Okay, and that's how I'm looking at this price action here. I'm looking at it as an A, B, and C, and it is a bull trap. Okay, well, I'm not saying it is a bull trap. I'm looking at it as a, it's a good chance that this is a bull trap and that we are going to see a lower low forming. So I'm going to explain several reasons why I'm looking at it that way. Um, first of all, there's no doubt in my mind that we are following a wedge type structure here. You can see um, converging lines. So if we create a channel for the bottom and the top, we're seeing converging lines. When we see such a, a wedge type structure, there's three main things it can be. So the one I've labeled here is the WXY XZ, which is what I believe it is. Alternatively, you can have your, your leading diagonals or your ending diagonals. Now, I can't see this being a leading diagonal. Um, and secondly, it's certainly not an ending diagonal. Okay, so uh, they're completely out of the question. For me, all that's left is this being a W, X, Y, X, Z. Um, and yeah, I've got this as a, the first three waves down to make W, th three waves up to make X, then we've got three waves down to make Y. And then I was getting a little bit concerned. I was wondering why we've had three waves down to make Y and then we've made another little wave down. I, I couldn't really get my head around it, to be honest. And now it's becoming a lot more apparent it is actually this move down was actually part of a correction. So it was an expanded flat where we had our A wave, the B went further than how far the Y wave went, which made turned it into an expanding type structure. And then the C wave came a lot further higher than the A wave. So it's a, expanding in nature. Just to use fibs to further validate this, let's uh, just zoom in on this. I want to show you the best way to uh, predict where C wave will go if we do if we look at our A wave so we'll start A wave here because it's the lowest point we'll finish it there so let's take the a fib extension of that and then we extend it from where the B wave finished absolute perfect 2.618 extension so it's respecting this basically it's showing that this price action here this a very aggressive impulsive move to the upside is respecting this move to this move okay the fact that the respect is so great for that in, in the sense that it stopped perfectly at the 2.618 tells you that there's a very high probability that it is related and if it is related the only way I can see it being related is as this expanded flat pattern so that's why I'm very comfortable with labeling it as an A, B, and C. Now on top of that, how much, this is our Y wave, so W, X, Y. How much of the Y wave have we retraced? So if this is, let's start X here, sorry, start the Y wave here, take it down to the bottom of Y. So Y wave finished, so slightly lower. There we go, Y wave finishes here. So we hit the 0.618 exactly. Now I am on the <coughs> I am on the log scale, and for fib retracements, I do prefer to use the linear scale. If we go on linear, we haven't we've we haven't quite hit the 0.618, but I do think it's interesting that on the log scale we have hit the 0.618 perfectly. So another reason why it could just be the completion of a correction. So we've basically retraced this Y wave 0.618, okay? That's on the log scale. Other parameters for the downtrend. So obviously we can just use very simple converging trend lines that we've got here for the wedge pattern. Um, so yeah, you can see we've only really wicked above it here. It's only really a wick. Now, as you'll know, if you've been watching my videos, I'm a big fan of pitchforks. So let's have a look at the pitchforks. So let's take these trend lines off a moment. Let's pull up the pitchforks. So, okay, this is the main pitchfork that I've been looking at. So first pivot, second pivot, third pivot is a shift pitchfork, held price really nicely, lower median line test, median line test, up to the upper median line, median line test a few times. Then we came down lower median line, 
up to the median line and now we're finding resistance at the lower median line so price has never actually convincingly gone above this upper median line here okay once we see a convincing move above the upper median line in fact even the price going above this high here 10.3k for me i would say that my wxyxz is invalidated and in fact this could mark out the key low here if we get above 10.3 again I, I i feel that we're going to see a lower low before we take out 10.3k but i would be happy to accept that this count is completely wrong if we go above 10.3k so that's my invalidation point okay so this is one pitchfork that i wanted to demonstrate and um, the second one, sorry bear with me second one is looking at the the y wave um Okay, so this is the pitchfork for the Y wave. First pivot, second pivot, third pivot. You can see the Y wave, this is your first wave down, then you get this flat pattern, okay? So your first two waves are what you need to form your pitchfork. So first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, it's a modified shift pitchfork if you wanna try plotting it on for yourself. We basically, first of all, we retest the upper median line then we come down all the way as far as the lower median line, range between median line and lower median line, and then where have we found resistance? At the upper warning line, absolute perfect bounce off that point, okay? So basically, what I'm demonstrating here, pitchforks demonstrate the momentum and the trend. Once we get above the upper warning line, we can say that the downtrend has been lost and we're shifting momentum to the upside. Right now, I'm very comfortable in saying downtrend parameters are still intact and we're still propagating downwards. So that is where my bias is at this moment in time. All right, so that's looking at the pitchforks. What else can we discuss? So let's see, let's take those off. So we've discussed W, X, Y, X, Z. Uh, I've explained the ABC. We've explained the converging structure. Okay, another thing I want to show you, WXYXZ, a big question that I'm sure a lot of you have got, why is there so much volume here, okay? So this big volume spike here, how, you're probably wondering, can that be part of an X wave? Well, let me show you, let's go on the daily. Here is the 2014 crash, this is Mount Gox, okay? Mount Gox crash was attributed to this decline in price action. Um, so 12th of November 2014 is the, the, the day you really want to check out. So that marked out, so this was our W, X, Y, X, Z. Can you see here, big green candle, 12th of November 2014, nice bit of green volume coming in. Yeah, big bull trap, yeah? Don't let it catch you out again. So. Here you see nice big spike in volume for the termination of an X wave and it basically tests the upper parameter of the uh, downward sloping um, wedge and then what happens we roll over to form our Z wave make a lower low and this is something you'll often see with um, wedges you'll often see a breach um, of the actual wedge structure itself at the point that it terminates and then it will go back in its original direction doesn't have to happen though and i'm not saying it will happen this time around but basically what i'm showing here is just showing you how we can have good volume on an x wave and it can still roll over okay so that's another thing i wanted to highlight next thing i want to show okay first of all horizontal levels i know a lot of people like the horizontal levels so um 9.3k was a really significant horizontal level I was monitoring so 9.4 rather around this point you can see the significance of this horizontal level I'm sure you can all appreciate that it marked out very good support here and um, oh yeah we shot above it with a wick but where will the close be the close is going to be significant obviously the daily close or even the weekly close will be very very significant so that's horizontal levels um, so you can see it's been a sharp wick to the downside uh, another thing I want to focus on, actually, sorry, on the shorter time frame, let's go on the 15 minute. This was, just to confirm its five wave structure, let's take off volume, it's just, 
distracting at the moment. So I've got this as a one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Wave two, very drawn out, prolonged. Wave four, very short and brief. So you've got your alternation there. Um, so wave one, if we do a fib extension up to here, extend it from the lows, we come up to around the 4.236 and then it looks like some kind of running flat pattern wave four. And we've got our fifth wave to the upside. So either way, we've got five waves up. Okay, personally, I think it's part of uh, the completion of an X wave, uh, an X wave expanded flat, as I've mentioned. The bulls, I know they'll be looking at this as this has been a key bottom here. This is a five wave structure up. We're going to correct it. Maybe 0.618 correction, everyone's going to be looking at. I'm sure everyone, a lot of bulls are looking at this. Probably I moved down to 8300. Um, and then they'll be looking to get in long again. I'm sure a lot of bullish people will be looking for that play out. Another thing the bulls will be looking out for is on the Bitcoin futures chart, there's obviously a big gap up. Um, due to overnight price action, and they'll be looking for the close of that gap to then look to get in long. But personally, those aren't things I'm looking out for. As I've mentioned, I see this as a, a completion of an X wave, and we're going to head further down. <coughs> okay, next thing I want to show you two other key indicators that I like to look at. So we'll take a look at moving averages. So simple moving averages. So everyone was talking about this death cross 50 day moving average going beneath the 200 day moving average. Um, so the blue is our 50, black is 200. And um, yeah, we've seen it in, in the past. Price suddenly shoots up when everyone's anticipating a death cross play out. Um, but it's good to see actually, the 200 day isn't being too well respected here, showing that it's not such a significant parameter, uh, parameter for trend. I think much more important is the weekly moving averages where we saw previously 200 week moving average act as wonderful support back here that's the black line um it's what acts as wonderful support here and currently the red line which is our 100 week moving average is acting as good uh support now i as i say i do think we're going to get another move down but it could be a sharp wick to the downside and then we still get a close above our 100 day, 100 week moving average, a play out like that. Um, as you can see, we're still not above the 20 week moving average, which is a very key parameter of trend also. So that's looking at moving averages. Now, the last thing I wanna demonstrate is just uh, Camarilla pivots. These are another key parameter that I like to focus on. So you will see how the S3, S4, R3, and R4. R stands for resistance, S stands for support. And um, these are basically yeah, Camarilla pivots and price will often rebound off these levels. So you can see here, we broke above the R3, retest all the way up to the R4. You often get wicks above, but closing candles fail to get beyond the R4. And now we've come down, where did we come down to the R3? And so I'm not surprised for us to see a bit of a bounce here because we've tested the R3. But I do think that we're probably going to see another wick down below, probably another close, a weekly close above the R3 um, after reaching our um, Z point Z for the WXYXZ play out. So these are the reasons that I'm expecting another move to the downside. Okay, so I think I've explained everything that I want to talk about in today's video. Um, yeah, I'm very cautious of this. I know that this will be attracting a lot of people, this move. There'll be a lot of attention on it. I'm sure it's all over the media. I know it's all over uh, crypto Twitter. Everyone's talking about it. All I'm saying is be, be mindful because have the bear trend parameters been taken out? Ask yourself this question. Don't get fooled into thinking fast price action is always in the direction of the trend. Okay, it's just not the case. <clears throat> just remember the C wave of a flat pattern can be very, very aggressive. It's a five wave structure, it's an impulsive structure. So the, those are the key learning points from today's video. But obviously invalidation, I would accept that I'm wrong if price gets goes above 10.3K before moving and making a lower low. Yeah, that would be the point of invalidation. 
All right, I think we're going to wrap it up there, guys. Hope this helps. If it, if you enjoyed the content, obviously leave a like. And uh, yeah, any queries, as always, put them in the comments down below. And don't forget, as I say, Cryptology Service it has been running several months now. Um, and people have generally given very positive feedback. And yeah, we basically put a lot of focus on the, the altcoins as well as Bitcoin. Because as I say, I'm expecting bigger moves in the alts than we do see in Bitcoin. So exciting times ahead and let's see how things play out. All right, guys, take care.